The views presented in this documentary are solely the personal opinions and views of the creators and director of this film. This film is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I don't promote the use of drugs. Please do your own research and form your own opinions. But with that being said, please enjoy the film. Psychedelics are illegal, not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. There's some preliminary but growing evidence that this can help with certain issues, people dealing with PTSD, uh, people dealing with uh, depression, uh, people dealing with very kinds, various kinds of addictions. Okay, so I want to talk about my mushroom experience. Now, I had never done mushrooms before, never done any psychedelics before, and the reason I wanted to kind of get into this was firstly because I feel like the mushrooms told me to, we'll get into that later in the video, as to them having a mind of their own, but I also been doing a lot of research um, and seeing a lot of articles on like the positive health benefits, like mental health benefits of like psilocybin or psychedelics in general, even microdosing. And it makes us really question a lot of what we're told. Now, I like to believe that I was like relatively sheltered as a child. I don't know, probably not sheltered, but you know, I believe what we were told to believe. Like, I wish I could go back in middle school and like, Re like I want to go see what they taught us about drugs because I want to compare what we were being told to the to the reality because in my mind they just told us like oh drugs are not good for you like here are the possible effects here are the side effects that are bad just don't do drugs kids and I was like meant to, I was taught to believe like oh yeah drugs are bad anything that is illegal is illegal for a good reason and that's not true I did a lot of research on psychedelics how these things became illegal how other drugs became illegal and just realized that society is also not really tailored towards like humans having a good experience if that makes any sense so the whole thing in the 60s with like Timothy Leary the whole thing about him him like promoting drugs turn on tune in and drop out and like the hippies and then the government doesn't like that because these drugs make us see life from a different way at what point did he become the most dangerous man in america uh, there is nothing smart there's nothing uh, uh, grown up or sophisticated in taking an lsd trip at all they're just being complete fools America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Makes us see materialism as like bullshit. Like we don't need a lot of shit to make us happy that like we can be happy with ourselves. But guess what? Like capitalism and, and society doesn't like that. They want us to collect stuff and constantly be trying to hap be trying to get happy. The things you own end up owning you. Let's talk about another thing. Guess how much the the pharmaceutical companies make when you take mushrooms and it solves your mental health issues immediately from one dose zero dollars the big pharmaceutical companies that make antidepressants which i've tried in the past three separate kinds did not help me at all but they're a way to get us hooked on prescription drugs to then make them more money if there was a plant out there a natural plant or a mushroom that could help someone or help massive amounts of people relatively quickly and for like a decent amount of time going forward with a relatively low like dose or one or two or three experiences then what am i where am i even going with this thought the point is pharmaceutical companies don't like natural things that would help people and then ha not have them be dependent on it so keep that in mind people look at america no offense to any americans out there but look at the way the country is everyone is fat most people are fat americans are not winning their battle against obesity on some sort of prescription drugs or painkillers or like medication and like disease is high heart disease and there's all sorts of like stress and like conflict overnight Minneapolis on fire within this country and this is good for all the big companies but I also think that a lot of Americans think that's how things are like that's just the reality because it's like what we're kind of 
told and forced to believe versus like people now realizing like, holy shit, maybe the things that the government told us were not in our best interest. Maybe the government is, this is getting really way too conspiracy theorist, but you get the point. The point is question your reality, question what you've been told, do your research, but also like come at it with like an intelligent mindset. Like don't go do like meth, just don't do a lot of meth, you know, but look into things, look into why we're told what we're told and question everything because if you don't question everything you'll just kind of like go along the path of life that's already been kind of like told for you and I mean the more like it's depressing to think about but like you do have only one life and like if you think ah I could probably do that in my next life. Like, nah, maybe there's another life, but like, you should probably take action. Why, so I actually wanted to try this to kind of like help me with my mental health things, see if it makes any difference because I've tried a lot in the past, antidepressants and CBT and stuff like that. And I really didn't find like a concrete way of helping me long-term. Now I will say I did smoke a lot of weed in the past like year. And I do think that that truly helped me kind of like process a lot of thoughts at a more deeper level so it helped me like figure out a lot of things or open my mind to like thinking about things in a different way and seeing how things truly are or how they could be so definitely helped with a lot of introspection but it didn't really help me with like physically or like neurologically feeling better and I think there is some sort of antidepressant effects with like psilocybin, like anti-anxiety effects versus like weed will help you think through your problems at like a little micro level kind of thing. So I did want to try it out for that reason. Also just because I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So I decided to go away for my birthday and do mushrooms um, in the middle of a pandemic because it seemed like a good idea at the time. And it definitely was a good idea. And this is my experience. Let's get started. So the day before I actually did the shrooms, when I first got to the condo, I was super anxious. Um, the Wi-Fi wasn't working. The TV doesn't even work. Apparently they're doing a test of the fire alarm system. Love it. Just great. Fantastic. Why do I get stuck with like, why is a tripod here? Why do I get stuck with just all the issues ever? Hope it doesn't happen tomorrow. Now there's a dog barking. Great, great weekend, great birthday. 10 out of 10, I'm gonna die. And I guess I was just kind of like afraid to be alone with my thoughts and just like have, not really have much to do. One of the weird things about humans in general, I think we try so hard to have a distraction from our existence, but we also try so hard to just kind of exist. So we're always like, watching TV to distract ourselves from existing, but then we try to meditate to just exist. So it's very like contradictory. It's almost like we want to achieve like being in the moment, but we're also very scared to be in the moment because then it's just like, what do I do? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Think about it. Let's talk about the actual trip. So pre-T. Woke up in the morning, super anxious, unsure, and awkward. The whole day before I did the shrooms, I was I couldn't really do the whole YouTube thing, as you see from these clips here. So, 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 I can't even be a YouTuber anymore. What am I saying? Short. Um, we're now in a state of anxiety. Sentence is going great. And I literally terribly do. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, I literally have gotten so bad. That's, that, that's just, everything's up. Like, I'm so bad at YouTube. Maybe I'm not supposed to be a YouTuber. Maybe tomorrow, during our adventures in psychedelia, maybe they'll tell us that I'm not actually supposed to be a YouTuber. It all felt very forced and sporadic. It's as though I wasn't really comfortable with who I was or not comfortable with how people would perceive me because I didn't really know who I was. It's a, I don't know. Sometimes we don't really know who we are and then it's like identity crisis kind of thing. Now this was even before doing the shrooms. So there was a, like a confusion about my identity. So let's talk about making the tea now. We have some Ecuadorian tricolor here. We're gonna be doing one gram in some tea. I've heard the tea is the best way to do it because it alleviates some of the nausea. It comes on rather quickly and it's better on your stomach and better, I guess, easier to, to consume than just like chewing on dried mushrooms. We have one gram of those. We have a coffee grinder. We have making a mess. We have some other tea bags here. Uh, we need some ginger, which I have. Ginger and some lemon. Let's try this out. Right now it is currently 9 a.m. Uh, we are doing this on an empty stomach. The mushrooms into this tea now. And then we're gonna put some ginger in there and some lemon and some honey. And we're gonna steep it for like 20 minutes and then we drink that and then after we're gonna do a second smaller tea with the rest of the uh, mushroom tea bag. Cause like I've heard that if you do like two 
bruise, you get like most of the psilocybin out of the mushrooms because we don't want to waste any. While it's steeping, we'll do some uh, journaling and set the intention for what we want to get out of this because this is not just like a having fun. This is like, let's figure out our life. So let's do it. While I was letting the tea steep, um, I was trying to meditate and kind of like write down my thoughts and intentions for the trip. And I just kind of didn't want to go into it with too many intentions. I kind of wanted to just like let the experience guide me as to where it was going. But I for sure wanted to kind of get some sort of self-development out of the experience more so than just like, I'm going to try shrooms. Cause like, you're not going to get much out of that if you just have that mindset. All right, 9.30 a.m. So I consumed the tea. Wasn't really expecting that much. Certainly not what eventually happened. And the tea tasted pretty good. I mixed in some like raspberry pomegranate tea bag in there and it was actually pretty good tasting. That tastes good. I'm a professional chef. I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting like, you know, kind of like a gross taste, but it didn't really taste like much. It just had like a very faint mushroom taste, obviously. So as I was coming up, I was like, I'm gonna watch Moana. Cause it was one of the videos this like the, the Airbnb guy had on his little USB stick. I was like, all right, let's watch Moana. So around 10 AM, I'm just lying on the couch, probably about like 30 minutes after the tea under a blanket, just watching Moana. I had a little bit of slight nausea, which does kind of give me a lot of anxiety because I have a lot of issues with ang with like nausea and anxiety in the past. A lot of times, like if I go somewhere new or even like just in general and I have like bad anxiety and I can't sleep and I have nausea, it'll be like a really bad vicious circle and I can never really sleep. So that's a problem. I didn't really want to have that for the entire trip. That was my concern. I didn't want to have like super anxious nausea for six hours because I would actually kill myself if I did that. So to make things better though, the nausea does actually go away. I feel like everyone is going to kind of have like a little bit of like nausea because your body is not used to these like crazy spiritual mushrooms in your stomach and it's like what is happening get these out but if you kind of breathe through it distract yourself if you get past it everything is fine and you will get past it obviously even if you want to go throw up you can or you may find that you try but you don't fully so i went to the bathroom and i was like i might throw up and then i kind of like just distracted myself i was like you know what maybe i just won't throw up so i just didn't and i just felt better after that oh uh, yeah so i also noticed that if you kind of divert your attention elsewhere, close your eyes or something, you can get past it and kind of like get on through the nausea. So I'm just lying in bed still. I couldn't really focus on the plot of the movie. It wasn't really trippy um, or stimulating. I found that I was more sober watching the movie than just existing. Cause I feel like watching a movie is us trying to control the trip and do what our like human slash human body slash consciousness wants to do. The mushrooms want you to get through the nausea test, which is kind of like the gate to becoming an actual mushroom, if that makes sense. A little bit afterwards, I started laughing for no reason. And I was like, hmm, why am I laughing? I usually am so dead inside. I just started laughing for no reason, like a little giggle. And I was like, all right, maybe the mushrooms are doing something. Yeah, so I was just in my bed now. I turned off Moana cause I wasn't into it. I was still feeling a little bit nauseous and I was like let's put some music on so I put some music on uh had like a ha I had like a repeated songs playlist um I listened to some like house music song it was all right and then I was like closing my eyes and then gooba by six nine are you dumb stupid or dumb huh? it came on and I was like that turn this off I like that was a bad no this is not the vibe I want to have right now so 10, 20 AM, I was feeling a little bit sick, but this is where I kind of had that calling to go outside, partly from the mushrooms, I think, and partly because everyone else is like, you got to go outside, man, try to go in nature. And I definitely, this is like the biggest thing you could do. If you're somewhere that's nice in nature, somewhere like not too busy, not too crowded, definitely go outside. So even though it was the coldest day of the year, so actually my grandma's birthday, uh, RIP, I feel like I felt her spirit in the ground, one with the earth. That's really woo woo, but I feel like I felt like I felt her spirit in the ground. So I decided to bundle up, not sure if it was for the temperature or if it was for like protection against the mushroom reality, but two pairs of pants, cashmere sweater, wool socks, hat, which I never wear because I wasn't the one getting dressed. I'm convinced the mushrooms were like you're gonna put a hat on so i put my hat on looked in the mirror that was a not a good idea but it kind of was a funny idea i watched that have a good trip on netflix and everyone's like don't look in the mirror but then also do look in the mirror and i did and what I saw was something I heard about, which is like a completely symmetrical face, like slightly translucent and like a little bit warped and melting. And pupils had some crazy dilation going, but the weirdest thing was like symmetrical. Like you look at yourself and it's like, you're looking at like mirror, mirror, Snapchat filter thing. It was really, just really weird. I don't know why looking at yourself is so much weirder than looking at like anything else, but it was. 
All right, so 10.20 to 11 a.m. Walked outside and I felt the cold. No crazy visuals just yet, um, but I also didn't lean too much into the trip. I was a bit tired from the lack of sleep, um, so I was like, should I get some Starbucks, you know? So I just walked down and I'm like, all right, let's try to get some Starbucks if I know how to order. Walked in, asked for like a tall green tea matcha latte over here. Delicious. I wasn't having caffeine, but I was having like green tea. Spent like six bucks. At this point, I was confused. Like sober me was like, why did I spend $6 on a drink that costs like $4.85? Then I realized as I was in some bougie ass place that has like upselling of the Starbucks. And I was like, you know what? I just did mushrooms. I'm not really gonna complain. Let me pay $6 for a drink that costs probably $1 to make. So I'm sipping my drink delicious walking along the boardwalk didn't really feel much yet but the nausea was like completely gone this is i'd say um like an hour to an hour and a half after i actually had the tea slight bit of caffeine kind of helped with my energy it felt weird in my mouth too like that's what she said drinking it i felt like the bubbles were like more prominent like i i was i was drinking it's almost like you drank an aero bar but like a green tea aero bar i don't know you get the point Drinking this hot beverage was kind of cool on the mushrooms. So I didn't really have much of a body high, which was good because I didn't really want to be like super duper heavy walking through a forest. Some people get like a big body high and I wasn't really down for that if I was going to go on a 17 hour hike. So 11.15 to 11.48, made my way to the nature preserve. Why I picked this place, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure the mushrooms told me to go here. So to give a little context, it's just like a huge nature preserve, um, very close to these condos, a village with some food and stuff, completely in nature with designated paths, boardwalks, and beauty. You can't really get lost, and you're away from any chaos of the real world. All right, so I get like 10 minutes into the forest and I start to yawn a lot. And I remember watching CG Kid um, saying he always yawns into his trips. And this was how I knew it was kind of like starting to hit because I wasn't really tired, but I was yawning. And these were like some serious yawns. And this is kind of where I think the peak was. Started to really get lost in the trip. And when I stopped and really focused on like where I was, looked at the trees, I saw all the visuals and felt really like at one with the earth. So at around 11.48, um, I sent a message to Mar over here saying how I understood how trippy things are in our mushroom reality, even though you can see nothing in human reality. I just want to capture this. I know what it looks like now, but I just want to like see what it looks like normal. So being able to switch back and forth was weird, but enlightening. So I'll just show you like a video of what I saw in reality. And then like it wasn't, it wasn't like that when I did mushrooms. Except nothing looks like this right now. In reality, so I did the actual mushrooms. Like everything was going, like everything was talking to each other, everything was crazy. And it was just very interesting how the way we perceive things on these mushrooms. Now I remember this particular moment, I saw this portal and for some reason this was like just sort of like at the beginning of my, of my peak and I really felt like walking through this portal was like going to take me out of human world and into the mushroom world. So I was like, all right boys, I feel like I'm going into the nether in Minecraft. I just enter the nether. If I die, I die. If I feel like I'm going into the mushroom world, let's do this and i just like went through and i from there on i was like we are in the mushroom world boys let's do it
Okay, so I got to a road and I was like, should I cross it? Should I not cross it? But I figured because I didn't really know where this path went on the other side of the road, I was like, I'm gonna turn around. This is pretty much like the peak of my visuals, which was where like, if you focused on the distance, things would be like kind of cartoony or like sacred geometry, or like you wouldn't really be able to tell how far something was away. Someone else said that like, you look in the distance and you're not sure if like the tree is far away or if it's like a miniature tree. And I kind of felt that, but it was very, it wasn't scary. It was like very interesting the way that you perceive things um, on the mushrooms. So around 12.05, I'm recording this video and I was thinking like you have some profound thoughts on the mushrooms and this thought was that like this is a metaphor for life like the hard packed path that everyone follows on this trail signifies like the path that most of us, most of us take in life. So it's like the tried and true but doesn't really offer us anything more than what it is. So for example, you know like going to school, getting a regular job, like going on your path like having a child get, getting old and like dying you know just like a regular stereotypical path path that's already been thought out life kind of thing versus like the snowy path which is a little bit more slippery a little more more uncertain but it's sometimes more rewarding and more enjoyable and i was kind of able to walk on both of these and see from both perspectives so this could signify the two versions of my day, which is like self-reality walking version versus like mushroom pausing in place, tripping uh, visuals self. It was really weird. You have a lot of weird thoughts on here. Okay, so this is between like 12.05 and 12.21. Don't ask how I know these times, but like, I know. So I came to many crossroads in the forest, a uh, different path leading to different places. I probably looked crazy, but I stood at these signs for what seemed like 10 minutes of like real time. And eventually I picked the left path. Uh, the human version of me wasn't sure what the right decision was, but the mushroom part of me I trusted and followed. So it led me to an opening where I saw a pond. So this pond was frozen over. And there was a sign with some turtle info on there. It was at this time that I remember feeling as though me and the turtles were like the same species, the same consciousness. Cause I greeted them, like they were on a sign. Like there was different forms of turtles, like, these turtles inhabit this pond. Um, and I was like, boys, like hope you boys are doing well. Like hope the turtles are good. Like you guys good? And I was like, whoa, I'm like, we're all just existing. They just happen to be in turtle form. I just happen to be in human form, but we're actually the same. It was a really crazy thing. Like I was thinking all, all life forms and life forces are the same. We just come in different shapes and sizes. Whoa, look at me inspirational pickering fitness so the thing about mushrooms at least the dose i took is that you still have some semblance of not f dying so i looked at the frozen pond and i was like i probably should go on there because it might break the ice doesn't look that secure so you're still in control from a macro trip level but you should let the mushrooms kind of like lead the way so around 12 21 legendary time i see a man next to the pond on cross-country skis coming towards me. This was not a feeling of fear, okay? More so a feeling of actual astonishment, okay? I watched this man glide through the forest on cross-country skis. He had some cartoon looking face. It was like half cartoon mushroomy, but also half like he kind of looked like a cartoon guy. And he, we just nodded in acknowledgement of each other. And I was like, let me turn around and see if this man actually just glided past me on cross country skis. I turned around and it like, it was real. And at that moment, the sun literally just like came out. Most of the day was cloudy. The sun came out at this time. And I just like felt this feeling of like euphoria. And I felt like a sense of well being that everything was fine and everything was beautiful. And then I was like, yo, this is probably the biggest realization I had that cross country skiing plus like a low dose of mushrooms in a controlled and safe environment would be an amazing business idea. So of course Pickering Fitness would have like some sort of business idea during his mushroom trip. So now I spent the next like decent while thinking like, yo, I need to make like a treatment center where people could do shrooms safely and then cross country ski because at the moment, when I saw the guy on skis, I was like, yo, I need to get some skis right now and do that. So 
Then I saw a path to the right. This is not where the cross country skier came from, but there was a no trespassing sign in a house. So I turned around because I didn't really want to get like arrested on mushrooms for trespassing. I went down the way that the cross country skier came from and eventually made it out to a road where I had the realization that I couldn't have picked a better place to trip but then maybe I didn't actually pick it. Maybe the mushrooms all along had this for me and any resistance resulted in anxiety, despite not even ingesting the mushrooms prior to the trip. So I watched some cars go by and probably stood there for like 10 minutes. A snowmobile came along and then stopped. I watched him kind of like curiously, like why is the snowmobile stopping? And then he kind of like reversed off the road and just like went into the forest. Um, and I just like watched him kind of like disappear as like the light rays shine. It was a really interesting experience. So I stood at the sign here for like 10 more minutes just debating the whole cross country screen business idea. Um, I just wanted people to like experience the bliss that I felt in the moment. And then I had the desire to slide or ski along. So I headed down Ash Lane now. This is kind of like a long straight pathway. It was very much like kind of trippy because it was very uh, tunnel-like in both reality and like mushroom reality and I walked along and I saw some other people there I let them pass me because I was just like wandering around looking at trees and stuff um, wondering whether or not like they knew that they were just like consciousness in their own bodies or if they were kind of like still stuck in like being a human I don't know it was a weird idea so from here things calmed down a bit uh, visions were less but open-minded consciousness was still there. I was very like open, open thoughts, like big, big, deep thoughts. I ended up walking out of Poplar Lane. And at this point I realized I had to pee, but I didn't want to pee in the forest. I kind of felt bad, like I don't want to pee in a forest. These, this is, these, are my, these are my homies, like the trees. I don't want to pee on them. So I walked down towards these townhouses, which all like align the whole harbor thing. And I immediately felt uneasy because I felt like it was taking me away from nature and like putting me back in like the concrete jungle, like just just like society with like just buildings and stuff and like stress and anxiety. So like all the houses and like with people and constructed lives felt like so unnatural kind of thing. An observation that some people make after a psychedelic experience is how alien or industrial modern urban sprawl tends to look. So I just looked crazy. I just like walked along the bridge here, immediately turned around and walked back up into the forest. So I walk, I walk some more and past the open water I saw the previous day. Um, I saw this little like little stream yesterday like the day before it didn't really matter but today I just like marveled at the beauty of like this little running water I was like wow that's beautiful it's the little things you know so eventually I ended up back where I started in a nice little loop this is why I'm convinced the mushrooms told me to go here to book an Airbnb here and to not give up after like three people declined my booking because Doug Ford was like stay at home if they aren't if they aren't following the protocols, they aren't following the guidelines. I'm gonna come down on them like an 800 pound gorilla. So like a lot of the condos that were there that I tried to originally book, they said no, we can't uh, we can't rent them right now because it's not essential travel. So I just kept at it. Another concept is that the nature preserve kind of personified the trip. So the come down was around the same time that I finished like the full loop or maybe this was just the path all along pre-planned by the mushroom. So like from start to finish, the trip was basically like three hours like through the forest. So this is 1 p.m. or so at this point, I don't know, four hours after I had the tea. I ended up back at the condo, but I felt somewhat anxious because I felt like the walls of like being Christopher were going back up, um, kind of like exited the mushroom body and I was like being put back into human body. And it's, it's kind of like a weird transition, but like it's not really anything to worry about. I still had a sense of openness, but it wasn't as like blissful or like out of body as when I was like in mushroom body. So had some chips, Miss Vicky's sea salt and malt vinegar, the best chips ever. They tasted good, but not as much as I had thought or experienced on like weed sometimes. So I sat down post chips because I wanted to like write out my experience um, because I really, I had a lot to write, I had a lot of thoughts, I had a lot to like dissolve and like I could, I wanted to be able to take 
my experience, put it into words so I can look back at it later. Because I think a lot of people might do mushrooms and then like kind of move on with their life and totally kind of forget the thoughts they had in the moment to then analyze in the future. All right, so around 1.49, I took a bath. I feel like the mushrooms planned for me to take a bath. I love taking a bath, it's great. So I filled the tub to the top and I got in. It wasn't really trippy initially, but it sparked the idea of doing mushrooms in a float tank. Now I did a float tank or a sensory deprivation tank like maybe three or four times in my life. Um, and it wasn't really something I got a lot out of. It was kind of difficult for me to like unwind. I more so want to try it now and like try to meditate, but it was definitely something I wanted to try on shrooms. I've heard that like they kind of mimic each other. So if you do them together, it doesn't really do that much extra, but I'm willing to like kind of give that a try if possible. So this is a weird thing about the bath. My hands and my penis looked very weird underwater. So my hands and nails, they looked very childlike. And it kind of like brought up some insecurities because I remember like back in middle school, some girls would make fun of me because I had like super small bitten nails. And they'd be like, don't bite your nails, it's ugly. And I looked at my nails underwater and I was like, wow, maybe they are ugly. But I didn't really care, I don't care at this point, but it was weird that like underwater, the mushrooms changed the way my hands looked because I took a bath the following day and my hands didn't look the same as they did the previous day that I was on mushrooms. Turns out my penis actually looks like a small mushroom. I also didn't really feel any shame just being naked and like looking at myself um, as if I was just kind of like back in the mushroom body bliss. You know, I was, just like, I was just standing in front of the mirror like naked, like flexing, just living my best life, like looking like a good human being kind of thing. It was, it was body positivity 10 out of 10. So I got out of my bath and I always take a shower after my bath to like actually take a proper shower. And I used like all the products this guy had, conditioner, you know, body wash, some kind of luxurious mint shampoo. And I remember conditioning my hair and thinking like, this is some sort of rebirth back into society as if like the shower was a cleanse. I was like coming out of my trip back into human world. Um, with like my cleanse, my bath, my, my rebirth kind of thing. So I put my onesie on and I started writing some more. And after I wrote a little bit more, something kind of like called me to go back outside. And whenever I got this kind of like, you should do this in terms of like this day, I kind of followed it. So I ended up putting all my clothes back on. I went back outside and from like 3.15 to 3.40, I spent the time outside. So I went to see what life was like. I went to the fine food store there um, to look at the just overpriced items like of food at this little like harbor that has all these uh, elevated prices. So I eventually walked back to the condo. It was kind of cold and not as stimulating anymore. So from four o'clock to like 6.55, I just spent like three hours just writing down my experiences, trying not to leave out any details uh, because small memories can kind of like lead to bigger revelations when you kind of break them down. And then around 6.55, which was like the current mood when I ended my, um, my when I ended my writing, I was kind of hungry. I didn't eat all day basically. I had a stiff neck. I was kind of tired. I was emotionally drained, but I was happy. And I was like happy that I had the experience. And then I was like, I might smoke weed now just to kind of like see how that makes me feel. I did. I felt kind of like I didn't really add much. didn't really take much away, but yeah. Okay, so a little epilogue now. Now it's been about, what is it? Like two or three weeks since I actually did the mushrooms. I waited way too long to make this video. But in terms of like the first week after the mushrooms, I felt very much like open. I felt better. Um, I didn't really have a lot of anxiety or depression. I actually went back on drinking a lot of caffeine because I didn't really feel any negative consequences of having caffeine. Like before I did the mushrooms, I would always feel very like physically anxious, like tense, kind of like I didn't feel good. I felt very stressed when I had caffeine and I would have a lot. And then after I did the mushrooms and I came home, I spent like the first week whenever I had coffee, or anything, I just kind of felt better than when I, like the previous times I had caffeine. So I ended up having coffee for like a couple weeks and I'm back on having caffeine now. I might stop again because I am starting to feel a little bit more stressed as well as the whole feeling, like the whole afterglow, it does kind of go away, unfortunately, but that's okay because at least you have this initial feeling where you do feel good and you're like, there is the possibility for me to feel like this again. Now, in terms of what the mushrooms like kind of helped me figure out. It helped me kind of experience life in a different way, that there are different forms of like existence, consciousness, there are different state of beings. And it's very interesting to wrap your head around this because I think we're so used to being 
like in our own like just this one track mindset that things are the way they are and this definitely makes me want to do it again and kind of like probably find a safer like a safer environment and do more and really go like in depth on solving some sort of issues whatever i have like deep down that i can kind of work on because initially like what i did the one gram like walking around a forest it was okay in terms of like getting something out of it like getting some personal development out of it but i didn't really get that much it was mostly just like me going on a nature adventure like just in awe that the fact that the trees talk to each other and i want to kind of like i, ha I dip my toes in the water but i want to be able to go in and like probably do one of those things where you like lie down in one place like wear a goggles probably listen to some classical music and like really work on yourself as medicine instead of just like external adventures in the forest so there was a lot of visuals that I can't really explain or recall because you just sort of see them in the moment. Mostly just like the trees will move, the trees will look very much like pixely. Occasionally you'll see like faces in the trees, like in the branches, but it's nothing really scary, at least at the dose I did. It was just more so like you don't take things for granted as much when you do mushrooms. Um, everything is like prominent, everything has a has a meaning, has a purpose. Like. Everything is just more beautiful. And then for the, for the first week afterwards, I was also still kind of in the mood of like, I am one with the earth. So I would walk around the forest and I would just look at the trees and be like, wow, they're all just like out of the earth. Like we all look at cities and we're like, what is this nonsense? It's like a, a just giant thing filled with concrete and like buildings and stuff. And you look at the earth and you're like, trees everywhere. Like they're just, they're like, they're just, it's the earth. It's like a natural sphere of like just life and everyone kind of takes that for granted and like doing mushrooms connects you connects you is that even a word connects you back with like being one with an actual planet and not just the housing market of downtown toronto you know Okay, so I'm convinced that mushrooms have a mind of their own because within the playlist I was listening to for the whole trip, a particular song came on at the end called Friday Harbor. And it just coincidentally happened that the place I was staying at for the like duration of this little adventure I went on was called Friday Harbor Resort. Now I had never seen the playlist before. I don't know how this happens. So I'm definitely convinced that like the mushrooms, yes, they will, they're calling the shots, okay? Okay, so post-trip time is a very weird concept to me. Uh, less so now, but like as soon as I finished my trip, basically I felt as though time was like a separate thing that exists amongst us. It wasn't something that no longer like controlled us. So I didn't really go by time. I just felt like I was existing and then like time was a separate thing that was like still going on. It like wasn't with me. It was like next to me. I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to you. So post trip, I didn't really have any desire to like smoke weed. I had some weed with me and I thought about it. I was like, should I do it? Should I not? And at that point I had like such a clear, like calm demeanor that I was like, I don't really want to mess this up. Like I don't really have anything to escape from or to like experience more. I'm just kind of like at peace here and weed wouldn't really make that better. It was a weird idea. Basically weed will make you your present consciousness more interesting, but mushrooms will give you a new present consciousness, if that makes sense. One that's just being in existence with the earth, pretty much. If you don't understand what I'm saying, try some mushrooms, you'll understand. Consciousness is the ball of energy depicted in meditation, and you can kind of insert this into any body or mind experience. So when I was like doing the mushrooms, I didn't really feel like Christopher. I felt like I was like consciousness just in a body going on a, a nature hike. And like, just to give you a couple examples, like Jim Carrey and Connor Murphy were both kind of like going around the same idea of this, which is like, I used to be a guy who was experiencing the world and now I feel like the world and the universe experiencing a guy. We aren't really people. We're just kind of like all consciousness or existence. The word consciousness is a weird idea. Just think of like life form. Like we're all life forms that just so happen to be in a body and then like develop some sort of personality and like just thing, per person. I don't know. Makes sense to me. Maybe it makes sense to you. 
Okay, so as for what I took, I took one gram of Ecuadorian tricolor um, made into a tea with ginger, honey, lemon. And personally, this was a great dose for the first time. Like I had never done mushrooms before and I didn't want to go like too insane because I was alone. So I thought, all right, let's just do one gram and let's make it into a tea. And honestly, at the beginning, I wasn't expecting much. Like I thought it wasn't working. And then as soon as you say, I don't know if I'm feeling it yet, then you actually start feeling it. And honestly, one gram in the tea gave me like a pretty intense experience for like four to six hours. Mind you, I was still able to like function in public and like awkwardly talk to people and like find my way around the forest. But it was a pretty strong experience for just one gram. Okay, so one of the big overarching concepts about like my whole experience is that I feel like mushrooms definitely have a mind of their own. Like they're super old, they're super ancient. They obviously have a lot of like spiritual powers and have been used for millions and millions of years. I don't know how long millions of years is, but like a lot of years. And I feel as though you don't really consciously, this is gonna get a little woo-hoo or woo-woo. I don't feel like you consciously decide to do mushrooms. I feel like mushrooms consciously make you seek them out. You may think it is your choice, but in fact, it's them that causes you to make the decision to actually pursue them. Everything that happens up to that point is supposed to happen. In terms of the dose I took, I feel like the dose was just small enough so that I could get a glimpse of what it could actually be. I had an idea of what reality was, but I also could like lean into the mushroom trip. So I wasn't so out of it that I wasn't in touch with like being a human being. So it was a good little balance between experiencing real life and experiencing mushroom life. So an overarching concept, mushrooms allow you to just kind of exist as consciousness. Who you think you are is basically just like a construct to give you a couple like ideas. There was no COVID after did mushrooms. There was no depression. There was no anxiety. You just kind of like simply exist. And like besides all that stuff, the weirdest thing is that there wasn't any like feeling of cold. There wasn't any feeling of like fear or concern or hunger and cold being the biggest thing for me because I picked probably the coldest day of the year to do it. And I did dress like I put a hat on, I put a, like gloves on, but at no point in my experience did I feel as though I was freezing cold. I might have been cold, I just didn't feel it, which is a very strange thing for me. Okay, so the music you listen to, I believe, is the music you're supposed to listen to. So maybe it's nothing, or maybe it's some kind of ambient music. I just ended up listening to what I ended up listening to, and that enhanced my experience. So I pretty much had a Spotify playlist called Ambient Chill. It was like a bunch of just like ambient nature sounds with like, it was really nice, and I wonder what the trip would have been like without it. But the thing is, like, I was trying to listen to different kinds of music at the beginning of my trip, like, stuff I usually like to listen to, and I just didn't really feel it. And I just put on this ambient station, and I had my headphones in, and I just kind of left it on for, like, six hours. And luckily enough, the playlist is long, long enough to have six hours worth of music, but I really feel like this was, like, the soundtrack of what my experience was supposed to be. I'm going to leave a link to that playlist in my description. You can check it out. Okay, so when it comes to set and setting, like everyone talks about, it's extremely important. Now I realize that maybe the mushrooms had the whole thing planned all along. So why is this? Why would I end up somewhere alone after deciding to go at it alone? I was originally going to take someone with me just to like watch, you know, watch over me. But like a couple days before I decided like, no, I don't know if I want to do that. I feel like I only want to worry about myself. I don't want someone else to kind of change what experience I could possibly have. And it was probably the best decision was to go at it alone. And that's why my dose was small, so small, but definitely feel like the mushrooms made me decide to want to go alone. Next thing when it comes to set and setting, I ended up at a nature preserve. So we're talking about like a beautiful forest with designated paths, no really way to get lost, lots of cool stuff in the, in the actual forest. I don't know how I could have picked a better place to do mushrooms, honestly, other than like picking it in the summer. But yeah, it, I have a feeling that like, the mushrooms told me to go here. Uh, I had every intention of kind of like staying inside because it was unfamiliar area. It was snowy and cloudy and it was like the coldest, but about an hour into my actual like come up, I was like, I should probably go outside. Something tells me I want to go outside. And I was out for like six hours just walking in the snow best thing I could have done. So one of the weirdest things is like the day before I actually did the shrooms, this was January 28th, I smoked some weed and I went for a walk in the nature preserve just to kind of like get my bearings before I ended up going the next day in like on shrooms. And I didn't really enjoy it that much, which was weird. Uh, I was kind of anxious because it was like almost sunset and there was no cloud or sorry, it was almost sunset and there was like no light. 
um, and I was kind of lost. It was really cold and I wasn't really sure how long the path was or where it was going to actually end up. But then switch over to doing mushrooms and I was not concerned at all about the temperature. I also didn't notice that I like dug my toenail into my other toe and it was bleeding the whole time. I didn't feel any pain. I just felt like existence. All right, so if you're still watching the video at this point, I want to say big thanks. Uh, I appreciate you sticking through the whole thing. I know it's not usually what I post, but honestly, like this is what I wanted to make a video about. There's only so many times I can talk about just nonsense fitness stuff and not be repeating myself, not be making just dumb jokes all the time. But if you enjoyed this video, leave the video a like. Sure, it can't hurt. Leave me a comment if you guys have any more questions as to like my experience or just questions about anything in general. I would love to kind of have a conversation with you in the comment section or if you have your own psychic or you know consciousness provoking consciousness topic conversation experiences you get the point I can't talk again classic Pickering fitness but I'm not gonna keep you guys here any longer leave me a comment about your experiences give the video a like share it with your friends and I will see you guys in the next video peace love and tranquility and don't do drugs guys